Reading from the Book of Genesis The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Then out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. Every living thing would be called whatever Adam gave it. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, to all the birds of the air, and to all the wild animals. But Adam did not find a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. While he was asleep, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. Then the Lord God formed the woman from the rib he had taken from Adam and brought her to Adam. And Adam said, This time, she is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman, because she was taken out of the man. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, Jesus, whom God made a little lower than the angels, we see crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. Yes, by the grace of God he tasted death for everyone. It was fitting for him, through whom and for whom all things exist, who desire to bring many sons to glory, to bring the pioneer of their salvation to completion through suffering. For both Jesus, the Sanctifier, and those who are sanctified are descendants of the same ancestor. For this reason he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclamation of the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and asked him if it was lawful for a man to divorce his wife. Jesus asked them, What did Moses command you? The Pharisees answered, Moses permitted you to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. Jesus then said, It was because of the hardness of your hearts that Moses wrote you this commandment. Yet from the beginning of creation God made them male and female. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let no man separate. At home, the disciples asked him again about the same subject. Jesus answered, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. After this, people brought little children to Jesus for him to touch. But his disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became angry and said, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I say to you, whoever will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. He embraced the children and blessed them, laying his hands on them. Word of the Savior. Glory to you, Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, imagine a garden. Not just any garden, but the primordial garden, Eden, where it all began. In this garden, we see the unfolding of one of humanity's most fundamental stories, the creation of human partnership, the birth of conjugal love. This image from Genesis invites us to reflect deeply on God's plan for human relationships and, by extension, on God's own heart. In the first reading, we hear God say, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Notice the gentleness and intent in these words. God, the creator of all things, sees a need at the heart of his creation. Man, even in a perfect paradise, is incomplete without companionship, without partnership. And then, in an almost poetic scene, God forms the animals and brings them to the man to name. But none of them are suitable as partners. Finally, God creates woman, and the man's response is one of pure joy and recognition. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This story is not just about the creation of marriage. It is a profound statement about human nature, about our fundamental need for connection, for intimacy, for partnership. We are created for relationship, with God and with each other. 
The reading concludes with words that have echoed through the millennia. For this reason a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. This is the basis of marriage, a union so profound that two people become, in a sense, one entity. But before we delve deeper into this topic, let's consider our second reading, from the letter to the Hebrews. Here we find a reflection on Jesus. We see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. At first glance, this passage may seem disconnected from our reflection on relationships. But look closer. The author is talking about how Jesus, the Son of God, humbled himself to become fully human, to connect with us in our suffering and mortality. This is the essence of divine love, a self-emptying, self-sacrificing, self-giving love for the sake of the beloved. Isn't this the kind of love we are called to live out in our most intimate relationships? The author continues, Both he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified have the same origin. Therefore he is not ashamed to call them brothers. What a powerful statement! Jesus, in his love for us, elevates us to the status of brothers and sisters. He creates an intimacy, a spiritual family. And it is with this understanding of divine love that we come to our gospel, where Jesus is asked about divorce. The Pharisees, as usual, are trying to trap him. But Jesus goes beyond the legal issue and returns to God's original intention in Genesis. From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let no man separate. Jesus is reaffirming the sanctity and permanence of marriage according to God's original plan. He is reminding us that marriage is not just a social contract, but a spiritual union, a reflection of God's love for his people. But it would be a mistake to see this teaching only as a hard and fast rule about divorce. Jesus is calling us to a deeper understanding of love and commitment. He is inviting us to view our relationships through the lens of divine love, a love that endures, that forgives, that sacrifices. And then, almost as a counterpoint to the harshness of this discussion of divorce, the gospel presents us with a scene of tenderness. Jesus embraces the children, blesses them, and declares, Let the little children come to me, do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. This juxtaposition is no accident. Jesus is showing us that the kingdom of God, and by extension true love, is characterized by the trust, the openness, the vulnerability that we see in children. Marital love, in its purest form, should reflect this same quality. So what can we take from these readings into our lives today? First, we are reminded of the sacredness of human relationships. Whether in marriage, family, friendship or community, we are called to honor the image of God in each person and to seek connections that reflect divine love. For those who are married, there is a call to recommit to your spouse, to see your partner not just as bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, but as a brother or sister in Christ, someone for whom Christ died. For those who are single, there is a reminder that we are all called to intimacy and community, even if it is not through marriage. The church should be a place where everyone can experience the kind of love and belonging that God intended from the beginning. For those who have experienced the pain of divorce or broken relationships, there is a word of grace. The God who calls us to faithfulness is the same God who loves us unconditionally and offers us healing and new beginnings. And for all of us, there is an invitation to approach God and each other with the trust and openness of a child. To set aside our cynicism, our fears, our defenses, and embrace the vulnerable, transformative love that Jesus exemplifies. My dear brothers and sisters, may we, in all our relationships, reflect the love we see in Christ a self-emptying, self-sacrificing, persevering love. May our families, our marriages, our friendships, and our communities be places where the kingdom of God is lived and experienced. And may the God who created us for love and fellowship strengthen and guide us as we seek to live up to his divine calling on our lives. Amen.
Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.